This episode is called Nothing Part 2. It follows directly on from Nothing Part 1. And I'm calling them nothing, these two episodes, suddenly, uh, because there's nothing about them that you could possibly be interested in as a viewer or listener. Uh, in which case you might ask, why are you even making them? And you know, to that I would say, oh, for whatever reason, I am making them. But as it turns out, uh, I am sitting with my son and he's going to sleep and I just I proposed to him just now that if I sit with him in his room as he goes to sleep and chat uh, this episode that will help him get to sleep uh, to which he said I'm sure you know, which is very funny uh, but um, I'll say one thing that might be interesting to him now as he listens because he's listening right here and and that is the idea that we are all time travelers it's just that we're traveling in one direction when it comes to time uh, i say this because we've been reading harry potter tonight and and that follows on from the previous episode as well the fact that we're reading harry potter and the fact that I mentioned my son just now follows on from the previous episode because it was him that interrupted the previous episode when I was mid-sentence and mid-thought at one particular time there in my monologue, uh, which turned out to be right at the end of that episode for reasons just mentioned. All right, so... Um, yeah, so just as one interesting thought for my son right now, as he listens, as a nine-year-old, um, we are all time travellers, just like Harry, Hermione, and not Ron, because he wasn't a time traveller at the end of The Prisoner of Azkaban. Uh, but Harry and Hermione went back in time. Now, they were time travellers. We're time travellers in the forward direction. On that occasion, uh, the two kids there, 13-year-olds, were time travellers in the reverse direction. Look, it's an interesting thought, and I'm going to make nothing of it. Because this episode is about... Oh, by the way, to a certain extent, as I think about it, uh, you, I'm not going to mention your name, son, <laughs> um, you are, by virtue of this YouTube channel, able, as you listen to this, if you are listening to this, say in 10 years time, uh, you are able to be in two different points in time at the same time, because you are listening to this as a nine year old um, with nine year old ears. And it is quite possible that at age 19, you could be listening to this again um, as, a, um, uh, as a 19 year old, you know. And, uh, you know, I won't make any of the obvious jokes that, you know, you might be thinking it's rubbish at both ends of that decade. <laughs> yeah, because sometimes those sorts of jokes are a bit obvious. You know, they, they're better left unsaid. All right, so we are, uh, and that's the end of, you know, the exciting stuff for my son now, at the start of this episode. And uh, for sure, as he says, um, I think, think that he is dropping off to sleep already and that's fantastic i'm by candlelight here by the way have no idea um, whether that brings across any of my facial expressions and to a certain extent it doesn't matter this becomes a bit of a podcast uh, if you can't see me at all i've got a candle here all right so i'm just going to speak in this monologue in this um in this kind of drone uh, because it is good. Uh, it, it, uh, it's a good uh, tone of voice to get him to sleep, and it might get you to sleep too, dear listener. You know, it becomes a podcast, doesn't it, if you can't see me? I actually have a podcast, but I wouldn't you know, presume to send you in its direction uh, for a whole year. I think I mentioned it in Nothing Part One. Uh, I made a podcast, uh, something like... I, I really can't remember how many episodes, but I think it was in the 200s or 300s. No, it was definitely in the 300s. 
and um, each episode was about an hour each. You know, compare that to a YouTube channel in which I've gone too long after, say, 15 minutes of speaking. You know, I think this episode here will round out at 15 minutes, approximately. Um, so imagine me speaking for a whole hour. I think uh, there was one episode I did on quantum physics, which was very forgettable, but it went for about three and a half hours. Yeah. And, and that was mainly because I didn't know anything much about quantum physics. Um, the less you know about something, the longer you will speak about it. Okay, the drone continues. So let's follow on from Nothing Part 1, in which I was mentioning J.K. Rowling. And um, this book that we've been reading, my son and I, The Prisoner of Azkaban. And I did manage to mention... Um, um, other things which I think I finished and I also excuse me for a second we time travel what? oh it was in the same sentence Oh yeah, they time traveled to prove a man was innocent. That's serious black. Uh, we've got 17 pages to go. Yeah, so my son was just um, yeah, filling in some detail that I missed there on Harry and Hermione time traveling um, in a prisoner of Azkaban. Uh, all right, so um, yes, in the previous episode, I did, oh by the way, uh, son, um, you will be aware 10 years from now, you know, you'll be almost listening to yourself, but you won't have heard yourself just then because you were whispering, but you'll know you were here, which will be slightly interesting in slightly the same way that Harry found it interesting watching himself uh, in that scene that we just read about in our Prisoner for Az from Azkaban. All right, so there's that. Now, uh, following on from the previous episode, I know I was talking about one thing and another. One thing that I did um, talk about was I, I made brief mention of um, uh, whether one should give one's opinion in public discourse. Now, I don't know how I put that, but um, I know I, I touched upon it. Um, and... Uh, I feel I could say something else about that. Oh yes, I said um, I, that I would never give my pub my opinion in public discourse, you know, and, I, and I'm able to achieve that by uh, mixing truths with lies in podcasts, for example, or in uh, a comedy channel like this, you know, which is a comedy channel. Comedy is all about mixing truth with lies. You know, you wouldn't want to end up in heaven ever uh, because you know you can't mix truth with lies and have some fun in heaven that sort of thing you know um so you know, whatever i do think about anything is obscured you know? and that's not just that's not because i'm trying to be a funny guy um so to speak uh but uh, I've, i'm of the opinion uh, that it is good for some people to opt out in public discourse in terms of their opinions. Uh, now there is a you know, sort of uh, a disease in the world that suggests that everyone should get on board with an opinion. Uh, you know, if you remain silent in terms of where you sit on this issue or that, you're part of the problem. Now by silent, I think they mean if you don't sort of support this thing or the other thing, you know. But, you know, I, I disagree. Um, I, I think it's good for some people to opt out and just sit back and, and, and think about the process um, of the debate rather than actually involve, involve themselves in the debate, you know. And, you know, snipe from the sidelines, if you like. You know, but create satires, create comedy, or just be a philosopher, you know, and question everything, for example, you know. Um, so if, uh, and, and I think this t 
touches on what I was vaguely alluding to in Nothing Part One, but I think it's um, I, I think it's good for some people not you know, to um, show their hands on one matter or another. You know? And and the reason I say that, and this is just one example. Imagine if the whole world thought something was true. The whole world. You can imagine that. You know? I think there have been times when the whole world uh, thought that some sort of God or other was producing lightning. But imagine if the whole world something was, you know, believed in almost a religious way uh, that something was true. Now, it's good for some people to opt out of having an opinion on that and maybe even question it. Um, and, uh, and the result can be something like that something like this phone gets invented, you know, because someone suddenly starts questioning whether Zeus did produce lightning in Greece or whether Thor did that in Scandinavia and things like that, you know. Um, so it can, it can be good because sometimes the whole world can think something and be wrong. You know? And now that can happen just on a um, individual level too, or just in not public discourse, but in person to person discourse. Now I, I was reminded of this, no, I, I, I was triggered in this idea um, just the other day. Uh, and, it, and it related to, and I, I almost spoke about this in my previous episode, Nothing Part One, the episode I made called I'm a Nazi. You know, it didn't have that exact title, uh, but in that episode, I gave it a title called I'm a Nazi. Now, um, arguably, that was a wrong thing to do, to give it a title like that. And arguably, it was a good thing to do, to give it a title like that. Now, imagine if uh, you know, two people were discussing this, and one person was absolutely certain that it was a wrong thing to do. Absolutely certain, you know. And imagine I uh, was uncertain. And that's the situation we did have about that. I alluded to it in the previous episode. Uh, someone brilliantly, I don't mind saying, brilliantly uh, outlined an argument for me changing the title of that episode. Now, as it turns out, the episode itself made it clear that I'm not a Nazi, as you would expect, or as I hope you would expect. Um, but she correctly argued, you know, and I'm not going to uh, try and um, argue uh, the opposite point from what she was arguing, because that's what I'm, I'm not here to have an opinion. See, this is what I'm getting at. Um, but, you know, now, she made a brilliant argument for not having a title like that. And, you know, the argument basically centred on uh, most people will go no further than a title of a YouTube clip, you know, and I presume a post on social media or anything like that, you know, and they will judge you on the title. Uh, now, uh, the uh, I was actually really impressed and I rang her afterwards and I said that was absolutely brilliant, you know, because she made a... You know, I actually think she'd make a good barrister, and I'm not joking. Um, she made a great case for me changing the title of that episode. You know, I'm a Nazi. You know, it didn't re read exactly like that. I think it was something like, my family turned me Nazi. You know? No, my childhood turned me Nazi. All right. And she made a case for that, and she was absolutely certain that I should change the title of that episode. Now, for my part, I'm uncertain. A little part of me thinks I should. A little part of me thinks I shouldn't. Now, I'm not going to go into the reasons as to why I think it's a good idea that I should 
leave that title there and not change it. And as to the reasons why I uh, should change it, well, those coincide with um, the views of the person who was putting up such a great argument earlier. Uh, she had me convinced on that level, you know. So a little part of me was thinking I shouldn't change it, and a little part of me was thinking I should change it. Okay, now that's interesting. Now, who should win that argument? Well, you know, I'm not into winning, obviously, am I? Um, uh, but you know, she, she was very um, passionate about, uh, you know, that I should change it. So then one asks oneself, should someone who's certain of herself, um, should she win the day? You know, should I just, you know, because I'm uncertain, should I change it? You know, because she's certain and I'm not, you know, and certain defeats uncertain. You know? um, but, you know, then again, oh, and by the way, her arguments, you know, as I say, centred on the fact that, and, it, and, and she's right, you know, that a lot of people go f no further than the title. You know, and my children could be bullied five years from now because their father has put up a, um, a comedy episode called uh, you know, My Childhood Turned Me Into a Nazi. Now, my personal view, or I'll say what, what my personal view was, it was that you know, no one in his or her right mind uh, would imagine that I was actually being serious in saying that, or that I was necessarily being serious. Yeah. Um, but she correctly uh, pointed out that it doesn't matter what she thinks or what I think, it matters what you know, stupid people think. What they're likely to think, and if my, you know, if my children were to be bullied because, um, because people misinterpreted what I was saying, you know, I forgot I was an Australian, for example, and and, and that I was likely to uh, be being irreverent. Um, she said that's beside the point. They'll get bullied anyway, you know, and that sort of thing. And 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 then she went on to um, list all the consequences of being bullied, you know, which can go all the way, and she, you know, in detail, she said, um, you know, this is what could happen to your children if you leave it up. She was absolutely right, and it was horrendous, all the possibilities. You know, and then, and, and she went on and pointed out, you know, because she's very close to me too, and she said, uh, I could also cause damage to her via her association with me. She's absolutely right. And all this is a stunningly good reason for me to change the title of that episode. And yet, I'm not going to. Not yet, anyway. You know, I could be swayed. She hasn't come up with this one yet, but I, I think she should have a word to my wife. And whatever her, my wife's opinion is on this, um, you know, I'd probably be swayed by that. You know? um, uh, for, you know, for, for reasons I won't even go into here. You know? Um, that's uh, reasons of respect and all that sort of stuff in a relationship, blah, 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 you know what I mean? Um, and then, uh, but then where's the respect in that other relationship? You know? So it's all not very black and white, but the point is, uh, and I think she wouldn't mind saying it herself, um, she was absolutely certain that I should take that uh, title down yeah, and call it something a, a lot m less inflammatory that episode, you know, it's a comedy uh, episode, you know, so I was being absolutely deliberately clickbaitish, you know, because you should be clickbaitish in a comedy episode, you absolutely should be, but you know, in the end, what we've got is someone who's certain that that title should be changed, and you've got, uh, 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 and you've got someone, me, who is uncertain whether I should change it or not, but has a kind of sneaking suspicion that he shouldn't. And it comes down to a question of, should certain trump uncertain? If she's certain, you know, is she, is she more likely to be right than me? You know, or maybe uncertainty is, is a more powerful force than certainty. You know, that's a possibility too. And if it's not, you know, uh, then every preacher should win the day over every scientist in the world. Because um, preachers, for example, are certain, and I'm talking about evangelical, literal style preachers, they're absolutely certain about, for example, 
uh, how the universe started and who damn well started it, you know. Whereas scientists are uncertain. So, um, should certainty win the day over uncertainty in that case, you know? Um, should the scientists say, all right, we'll pack up our laboratories, we'll, part, we'll pack up our laboratories, because we're uncertain, you know, as to, as to absolutely anything, you know, because scientists uh, are not certain about anything. Uh, there's not one uh, sort of promulgation made by a scientist about which he or she or it or whatever is certain. You know, the scientist, the scientist is uncertain about anything. Uh, whenever a scientist uh, makes a statement, the scientist says, listen, uh, the evidence seems to suggest X, Y, and Z, you know, that the universe is expanding or whatever. Um, you, know, well, you know, and it seems to be that, you know, uh, time started, whatever it was, 13.6 billion years ago or 14.6 billion years ago. Can't remember right now. It doesn't matter. Um, but, you know, that's subject to further evidence to hand, you know. And, and a scientist would never say that, you know, Jesus didn't turn water into wine. Um... A scientist um, says, um, I doubt it, you know, but, you know, it doesn't, a scientist doesn't know for sure. Whereas an ev evangelical, um, evangelical preacher, for example, you know, might very well say, I absolutely know for sure, and you're uncertain, therefore my certainty trumps your uncertainty. You know? So, you know, what's more powerful? Someone who's a bit vague and unsure of himself or herself, or someone who's absolutely sure, you know what I mean, that he or she is right, yeah, and that sort of thing. Um, so that was that, you know, that, that was vaguely where my mind was wandering on that occasion. Um, now, um, uh, what else can I say about that? Probably nothing. Uh, but I was, we were reading J.K. Rowling earlier, and, and, um, and, Oh, I was, I was vaguely thinking of another example of that. Uh, what, the whole world thinking something's a good idea. Um, yeah, but, but, well, here's one. What if the whole world thought, and I'm not saying the whole world ever did think this, but what if the whole world, the whole known world, or a whole known world, uh, firmly believed the natural, that the natural condition of... Uh, uh, white people, as we call them now, even I do now, I've recently been converted over to the idea of describing people in terms of colour, white and black. But what if the entire known world thought that the natural condition of the white person was to be uh, in the ascendancy and the natural condition of the black person was to be in the descendancy? And I'm talking about slavery and all that sort of thing. I'm almost... Uh, speaking in code here because I think someone's asleep and maybe not. Okay, what if the whole world thought that was a truism? Yeah. Now, and the, uh, now that's an interesting thing. What if everybody thought that slavery was a good idea? Actually, I think there has been. I, I think the whole world did think slavery was a good idea. All right, here's here's a better example. What if the whole world was of the opinion that slavery is a good idea and that the only question to be asked. Um, in, in, with respect to that was you know, whether I should be the slave and you should be the master or whether you should be the slave and I should be the master because I think, I think by and large there were exceptions perhaps but we can't even prove it you know Cyrus the Great and all that sort of thing setting the, the, the slaves free um, but I think you know, it, it, the idea of the abolishment of slavery came along with the enlightenment roughly you know, well before some you know John Wesley. In fact, that was a Wesleyan church that we went past earlier. My son and I, when he saw Jesus floating on the window, uh, I mentioned that in nothing, part one. Okay, you, you, there's no way anybody will ever be able to join the dots on that. But anyway, you know, like, yeah, and, and this is a whole other episode I could make, which I wouldn't. But, you know, there's an example. What if the whole world thought that slavery is good. The whole known world thought that slavery is good. Yeah. Your whole known world. Right. Now, if you, if you demur on that point, um, 
and arguably everybody in the known world will think that you're being a problem because you're not uh, you're not buying into the accepted wisdom and truism of the whole world you know? this is why you know we should sit back and say oh, oh yeah all right maybe some people should opt out of having a definite opinion you know, and, and and should be arguing for uncertainty and doubt and all that sort of thing and I, I think that can go that can go for anything you know because you know um, like in Africa Africa America I think there would have been lots of plantations for example uh, in America in you know, the deep south you know, a lot of people uh, would have been conditioned and that's both the um, the masters and the slaves uh, that they would have been conditioned to both sides of the equation that this was all good, you know, as God would want it. You know, imagine if you wanted to rock the boat back then, you know, um, and, and, and sit out and opt out and not have an opinion on that. You might be seen as part of the problem, and the same can happen in the modern world. And, and the example I can think of just offhand on that is not too long ago, and I could be wrong because I'm not on social media and all that sort of stuff, so I can't keep up, but not too long ago, we weren't allowed to say black. You know, we had to say people of colour. Is that true or not? Let's just imagine it was true. It really doesn't matter whether it was or not, but I have this vague sense that that was the correct terminology. What if the whole world said, if you don't get on board with that, you're part of the problem? Um, and, you know, if you sit out on that, then you are part of the problem. You know? Now, it, it, as it turns out, it was good that some people sat out on that because now, um, you know, black lives matter. You know? People of colour are black. You know? So these are the things, you know, it gets very complicated. All right, I'm going to finish off now. Um, uh, I want to get back to J.K. Rowling, speaking of contentious people. Uh, and... Uh, and, and that's a pretty abrupt segue because I, I'm completely sure my phone must be out of memory any second now. Uh, J.K. Rowling and the book we just read, The Prisoner of Azkaban. Uh, very interesting. Um, uh, my thought on J.K. Rowling is that uh, for her to have s as many dangerous ideas as she plants in her books, um, you know, she can't, you know, uh, if, if, if she wasn't one of these people who aren't good in the senses that I've been mentioning, then we would never have books like Harry Potter and this and Harry Potter and that and Harry Potter and, and the Prisoner of Azkaban. We just wouldn't have these books. Recently, and this is, you know, this is a pretty sudden jump, and I'm getting back to nothing part one in concluding like this. Um, recently, uh, um, what's her name? J.K. Rowling, or Rowling uh, came out and said, had some dangerous ideas which were wrong, according to the accepted wisdom, and were wrong even according to me. It was something to do with trans and all that sort of stuff, you know. But anyway, she... Um, was um, she was mixing things up in in almost a troublemaking making way? I would have thought it seemed like troublemaking to me. You know, she's a troublemaker, and she has dangerous ideas, and she she has a lot of dark ideas too. She's um, there's no way she could have written these books if she didn't have dark corners in her personality, or was willing to, or if she wasn't willing to to um, you know delve in to the dark arts. You know what I mean? Uh, um, and now, so what do I make of that? Well, my feeling is I'm not surprised, you know, if she has got herself into trouble because it is that very personality that enabled, that allowed characters like Hermione in, um, in the Harry Potter series to even come into existence because Hermione is almost an extension of herself in a whole old part. I've heard. All right. And all the other characters in Harry Potter would not have been able to exist had it not been for the fact that uh, 
J.K. Rowling isn't cut from the same cloth as, for example, Daniel Radcliffe and Emma Watson, who are actors in her uh, movie series. All right, so in the movie series, Emma Watson plays Hermione. Now, I have seen around the trams that Emma Watson has stated that she is no Hermione in real life. She was acting that part. Yeah, but J.K. Rowling is that part. Okay, now, um, and, um, and J.K. Rowling recently came out and made some statements. Now, here's where I'm going to say that I'm not going to have an opinion. Yeah. Um, look, you know, and if I do, I may make the opposite opinion another day in another episode in a comedy show or something. Right, here's what happened. Uh, J.K. Rowling, unsurprisingly to me, uh, heard a lot of stuff that was being put about as accepted wisdom, self-evidently true and all that sort of stuff, um, and just wanted to question it. Look, to me, it sounded like she was stirring the pot, throwing doubt... Uh, poking fun at something that a lot of people uh, held very dear as being truisms, you know, and it all related to the same things that my friend earlier was talking about, that, you know, if you don't hold these wisdoms to be true, people will, for example, commit suicide, you know. And my, my friend earlier, when she was begging me, actually, to take down the Nazi post, was actually applying that same pressure. You know, saying, if, you know, you're, uh, if anyone that you love commits suicide, you know, it could be a contributing factor. You, you know, you um, uh, being selfish enough to have a post like that up, um, you know, I'm a Nazi, you know, could be, even if it's 1% of the reason your children are bullied when they grow up, you could be responsible for a suicide. You know, and that sort of thing. You know. uh, so, you know, you can apply those pressures to people. And J.K. Rowling got the same thing. You know, if you persist in questioning the definition of uh, the word woman, I think it was, you know, um, then you could be responsible for people committing suicide. And J.K. Rowling was sort of saying, I'm not going to be cowed by that. Now, I don't know if the two cases are that similar. You know, me calling myself a Nazi or her you know, calling herself a woman and asserting that there is such a thing, you know, that is related to her biology and all that sort of stuff, whatever she was talking about, it's not really relevant. I don't care about the actual debate items. I don't care about that. I, I care about the, the, the process, you know. Now, uh, she has been attacked strongly, you know, uh, for saying the, um, uh, having opinions that could um, drive people, for example, to suicide. All right, now that's interesting. Should she stop having those? You know, should I stop calling myself a Nazi in comedy shows and things like that, you know? Should I stop coming out as gay? You know, uh, which is something I have done in my podcast um, and all that sort of stuff, um, you know, which can be, which might be very disconcerting uh, for, you know, my children, for example, if they listen to those podcasts, you know, but I, I was making a point in those podcasts, I wasn't actually coming out as gay, but I didn't make that clear, you know? now look, I think, um, I think someone's dropped off to sleep, and I think I'll just stop there now, because I think I've, you know, I think I've made all the points that I need to make without actually needing to make a dramatic conclusion, I'm going to finish off right there.